The flagship McDonald's burger, the Big Mac. We've all heard that Mickey D's isn't good for us, but we also heard that cracking our knuckles isn't good for us. People never explain how. So here's an objective look at each ingredient top to bottom, ingredient by ingredient, video by video, everything on it. Starting with the bun, all three of them. Okay, we have to go to the most legitimate trusted source to get a good idea of what's actually within the bun. McDonald's.com. A lot of people think that fast food joints are hiding something or that their ingredients are top secret. Now, I can't guarantee if they're hiding something in terms of ethical and sanitary practice, but they legally have to list the ingredients. Our first impressions, the ingredients of the bun are typical of what we'd find in popular conventional bread brands. It's enriched, meaning these items here were added back into the bread because they were stripped when the flour was made. Niacin, riboflavin, and thiamine mononitrate are vitamins. Iron is a mineral and folic acid is a man-made chemical that turns into the vitamin folate when inside the body. We often think that bread is, you know, cutely baked in a stove, but it's actually one of the most processed, refined parts of the entire sandwich. Anyways, flour is starch. Starch acts a lot like sugar in our body because on a molecular level, they're almost the same thing. Water, and then we added more sugar. So this is almost surely gonna spike our blood sugar. Repeatedly spiking our blood sugar is a violent process that causes a lot of things to go wrong from insulin resistance, type two diabetes, continuous hunger. I mean, the list goes on and on. Some scholars believe that this mechanism is the single most important contributor to the obesity epidemic. Then yeast, yeast being what allows the bread to rise, it's virtually harmless, followed by soybean oil. And this is where we get into the fat conversation, and it could be a bit confusing, but let me say this. Soybean oil is the oil we're always consuming, but none of us have in our cabinet. It's the oil found in processed junk food, fast food. It can be found in sit-down restaurants, or rather that's a, a mom and pop shop or even a fine dining eatery, if you will. The oil itself is abundant in omega-6 fat. Omega-6 has gotten a bad rep as something that promotes chronic inflammation, heart disease, and other various diseases. But we can only achieve that with an imbalance of omega-6 to omega-3 fats. Omega-3s being the fat with the opposite reputation. Ideally, we'd have them in about a one-to-one -one ratio, but because it's hidden in almost everything we eat when we venture into the processed realm, the ratio is way off, reported that it can be around 20 to 1 for the average consumer. Food expert Mark Hyman says the oil used in fast food is often bleached and refined with chemicals and heat. It's beat up so much to the point that we have to deodorize it before it's sold. Then these oils are further altered and degraded when exposed to high temperatures like frying. I really want to break this down further for y'all, the mechanisms behind omega-6 and omega-3. Um, that's a whole nother video topic within itself though, and I'm going to make it in the future, so be on the lookout for that. You might be watching this after that came out, so check the cards. But we got more bun ingredients to go. Then we got salt. Mm, mm. Gotta love salt. Wheat gluten. All right, pump your brakes. This is where ish gets sticky. Now seriously, gluten is what gives bread its doughy property to where it's not super crummy like a Nature Valley granola bar, but also not like a stick of taffy. It's in the middle. It's you know, it's doughy. Now I'm not here to get into the politics of gluten, but we can get into these facts. Here's your gastrointestinal tract, also known as your GI tract, also known as your gut. Your gut is important. In theory, all diseases begin here, in the gut. The gut is the only doorway between the literal inside of us and the outside world. So our gut happens to be our number one defense of our immune system. It's on the front line. Many people argue that the gut isn't even in the body, just a long tube that stretches from the rudder to the tudder. Sorry, from the, from the mouth to the butt. Things aren't technically inside of us or a part of us unless they're in the blood. And the only security guard managing what enters the blood are our intestines. Gluten is made of something called gliadin. It's toxic trait. Gliadin is recognized as a foreign intruder within the body. And as we know, foreign intruders are met with sheer force from the immune system. Identify yourself. One of the immune system's weapons, zonulin, is released as a response to gliadin. Zonulin, a protein the body makes, starts to widen the gaps in our gut. Normally our gut is sealed tight. Ain't nothing that's not supposed to get through getting through. But when things get through that ain't supposed to get through, problems arise. As a matter of fact, the most popular diseases that you and I heard of to date deal with some degree of what we call leaky gut. I know you got questions. Why is gluten in our bread? Why does the zonulin pathway even exist? Those questions are a whole different video and I'm gonna make that video and I may have already made it. Just check the cards. I'm gonna add it when I make it. But we have a few more ingredients to go. By the way, I did see that you hit the like button. Hey, I see you. I appreciate that. 
Much obliged. Anyway, sesame seeds for texture. Even more flour from a potato this time. The potato alone is already known to spike our blood sugar. Now it's made into a flour, it's arguably a double whammy. It may contain one or more dough conditioners. These are exactly what you think they are. Datum is a man-made item that makes the doughiness of your dough even doughier. All right, this ain't your auntie's dough. Ascorbic acid is vitamin C. Mono and diglycerides are literal fatty acid structures made by man to make the dough softer and extend its shelf life. Enzymes, which occur naturally in most foods, just help us digest. And vinegar, which isn't an inherent problem. Just like most things, it depends on the quality. I'ma get up out your way.